Hello, hello, hello. Are you there? I am here. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Yes, how are you, Brenda? I'm doing great, thank you. Good, thank you so much for reaching out. Thank you for your time. Yes, yes, I'm, um, uh, I've heard a lot about you, and so um, I just want to call and find out what, you know, what all you can do and what you can help me with. Yes, and, and, and I, first of all, I cannot, I cannot thank Brian enough. That guy is telling the whole world about me. Like I know. <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's awesome. And and I to tell you the truth, I think I I think a lot of it has to do with it. I mean, with Brian and just other clients of mine that end up sending me people, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I just keep it simple and 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 I just show you basic steps to implement that really turn everything around. Like as far as your branding, your social media branding, your exposure, um, and 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 it's only because I I've been doing this for a very long time, just in the field of of marketing and internet advertising. Like I've been just really trying to crack the code on what it takes to capture elite on the internet. Yes. And, and I've been doing that for the past 20 years. Oh, wow. So okay. I spent a lot of time on the internet and, and really driving, you know, attention to get people to click on certain things and, and give up their information, you know, and, and that, that all started in 1999. But, but in 2010 is when I became a lender. So I was in the mortgage industry here in San Diego from 2010 to 2016. And it was in that 16, it was in that six year period from 2010 to 2016. It was in that six year period when I networked with a ton of realtors, you know, I was, I was the bank. So obviously a lot of realtors were coming to us to get their clients approved for first time home buying. And so I networked with a lot of realtors and, and in that six year period, I started realizing that the majority of the realtors that I was speaking with were not leveraging social media like they could be. Right. Like they just weren't running ads or they weren't really posting and they, and they just weren't. And this is, this is 2011, 2010, you know, 20 or 2010, 2011, 20 into 2012. And so I'm just realizing all this stuff and I'm like, man, and then it wasn't until 2016 when I was already sick and tired of mortgages. <laughs> and so I knew I had this background and this passion in marketing. And so in 2016, I left mortgages to start helping real estate agents with their social media marketing and Facebook advertising. But what I also knew was that every company was out there pitching you leads or, or, or Zillow was, you know, charging you an, an arm and a leg, you know, per lead. I already knew that most marketing companies that were approaching you guys were, were costing a lot of money. Yeah. And I knew that most realtors did not have that high budget to hire a lot of these expensive companies. So I did not want to charge a lot at all. Like I did not want to pitch you some other random, you know, promise of capturing a ton of leads. And so in 20, so that all started in 2016, 2017. And then it was in like 2018 when I realized that I realized every company was pitching you guys. And so what I started realizing was that 99% of you guys were missing the basics. Like every realtor wants to know, how do I sell my house today? Right. Like you mentioned an open house coming up, like every realtor wants to know, how can I capture a lead today? How can I find a buyer today? How can I find a listing today? Right. Like that's really yeah. all that's to it. Right. And so I knew that every realtor already had that in mind. But as I started requesting real estate agents on Facebook, like you see my friend list here. Yeah. I have 5,000 friends. And, and it's a public list, Brenda. It's a public list. So, you, you know, when we're done, you can go look at my list. Here's the crazy part, 4,900, well, actually, let's just put it this way, every single one of them, every single one of them except for one, which is my wife, she <laughs> is the only one on the 5,000 list, and again, you can go look at it, she's the only one on that 5,000 list who's not a realtor, so wow. we're looking at 4,999 real estate agents, and so that happened, that started happening in 2016. So 2017, 2018, and as you start to follow thousands of people that are all in the same industry, mm -hmm. they're all licensed real estate agents in the country, every single one of them. As you follow that many people in the same boat, 
you start to see patterns, you start to see habits. I start to, I started to see how everyone's posting their listing, how everyone's, you know, promoting their open house coming up. And so it was in 2018 when I said, wait a minute, rather than pitching you guys some crazy expensive monthly plan, I'm realizing that 99% of you guys are missing the basics. Yep. And so that's kind of where I found my niche. And I think that's why Brian and a lot of my clients end up referring me because it's simple, it's the basics, and it's where we need to start. Like, again, I already know you're looking for a lead. I already know you need to know how in the heck do I get people to my open house this weekend. Yep. I already know you're thinking that. But what I, what I found was the fact that we need to dumb it down. Like, that, that's what I call step mm -hmm. three. Lead capture, getting people to your open house, that's what I call step three. There's five basic steps that I'll show you how we do, how this all, you know, comes together. There's five basic steps. I didn't, and I ended up writing a book about this last year. Oh, wow. um, there's five basic steps. And that's step three, lead capture, buyer lead, seller lead, getting someone to our open house. That's what I call step three. But step one and two is what hinders the ability to really see an ROI on step three. It's step one and two that's missing from everyone's page. And so that's what I can definitely show you. So, so um, just to kind of answer your question on, on what, what exactly I can do and what I do, I'm gonna just show you these basics. Like I'm gonna show you step one, what we need to add to your page. Step two, what we need to add to your page before we go on to step three, which is promoting this open house or promoting any kind of listing because okay. that's all going to happen through some type of Facebook ad. Um, so let me show you, and, 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 and I'll show you all, all well, I mean, I can cover all this within the next 10 minutes. Like this is not really a long call at all. It's, it's really just basic. Like it's super basic, but I, I truly believe it's going to completely turn around your page. And when I show you examples of other agent pages, you'll okay. clearly see, you'll clearly see that your pages need, need a, need a facelift. Okay. Now, so, and, and again, it's only because we're building a business. It's only because it's social media and it, and it's, and it's only because we need our audience to really look at our page as, as, as if we're an authority. Like I want them to kind of br come to Brenda's page and automatically assume that she's the queen of real estate. Yes. Right. And that's just, and, and, and all that is, is first impression. When you land on the page, it's first impression. When you see big numbers on the page, all that is, is perception. So when, when people land here, and that's what I call step one and two, when people land here, we need, we need, we need their attention. Like we need, we need that aha factor. Like we need people to land here and they say, wow, dang, Brenda's really crushing it. And, and it's going to be simple numbers and simple links that I'm going to kind of show you. Okay. Make sense? Yes. Cool. Mm -hmm. So here's, here's what I can do. Let's go to, let's go to your page real quick. Let's go to, what's your last name? Suter, S-O-U. T-E-R. T-E-R. Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's pull up. Yeah, it's this one right here. Well, it's my personal page, right? Yes, this is your personal page. And, 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 and it all starts here. So a lot of the magic starts here. You'll be connecting with people on this personal page first, and then we'll get them over to the business page. But let me also, at the same time, let me pull up your business page. Um, okay, just let's, Brenda Scooter, realtor. okay, cool. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Okay. Um, should it just be Brenda Suter realtor, Brenda Suter which realtor. Okay. Huh. Um, let's see. Right there. Yep. Perfect. Okay, cool. Okay. So, and then let me also pull up a quick page so I can show you an example. Okay. And this is, this is, this will be step one and, and step two. This is, this is super, super basic and a big, big deal. So let me pull up Candy's page. Here's another realtor. She's in a completely different, you know, company, completely different state, but I'll show you hers as an example. Okay, so here's the deal. As I, as I started requesting real, realtors, right? As I started requesting every single one, because in 2016, when I left mortgages and I knew I wanted to help you guys, 
I understood marketing. So I knew, I knew that I had to figure out a way to get to you. Like I can either cold call every realtor in the country and say, Hey, I'm David. I can do marketing services, but I didn't want to do that. I could have easily reached out to my existing network because I had a ton of realtors that I worked with when I was doing their mortgage, you know, but I didn't want to do that either. Like I, I, when I was leaving mortgages in 2016, I was literally sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was sick and tired of it all. I didn't want to talk to no one anymore. And so, but I knew I had to reach out because marketing is everything. Like I knew I had to find a way to get in front of you guys. So again, what I started doing is just requesting every single agent. And now today, all of my, all of my, all of my friends are, are, are agents. So since 2016, this is what I've been doing is looking at real estate agent pages. And so here's what's going on. It all starts here. As you start to connect with people and as you even get out to your, to your local market and you go to networking events, you go to luncheons, you go to, you go to, you know, different events that lenders are putting on or title reps are putting on or whatever, whatever you're doing in your local market, whenever you meet someone, especially do you have kids? Yeah. You have kids, right? Yep. Three. Yeah. So as you're going out to whether it's sporting events or a school event or an open house, as you're meeting people in your local area, shaking their hand, giving them a business card and say, Hey, I'm a realtor. I'd love to help you someday. Those people are going to, are going to all connect with you here. You're not going to say, Hey, yeah, go to my business page. No, you're going to say, Hey, connect with me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the majority of people, whether it's friends that you're just requesting just randomly on Facebook or whether it's people just randomly requesting you and you don't even really know them, but you, you accept them anyways, or whether it's people that you're meeting your, in your local market, it's going to happen here. You guys are going to connect here first. And so as I'm telling you, following thousands and thousands of pages, here's step one. When I look at every page, 99.999% of the time, the intro looks like this. You have realtor at lives and from, and we're not friends just yet. I'll, I'll delete a few people so I can add you, but whether we were friends or not, whether we were friends on Facebook or not, this intro needs to stand out. Okay. So when I land here, because again, there's, there's over a million realtors, literally over 1 million on Facebook alone. Like on Facebook alone, there's over 1 million realtors. So as I land here, what makes Brenda stand out? Like, of course, pictures say a million words. Like I can look at all your pictures and be like, dang, she's an amazing woman. She looks like a family woman, amazing wife, amazing mother. I can look at pictures and tell all that but it's the, it's, it's the intro that's also going to give me some information as well. And it's the intro that's going to lead me to where Brenda wants me to be led. So for example, here's what your page looks like. And this is step one. Here's what your intro looks like. I come across Brenda's and that's what I see. I come across Candy's, and this is what I see. So right away, rather than showing me a link to her broker's page, which is what you're doing, you're sending me straight to Palmer House, right? So mm -hmm. all your friends that are landing here, it doesn't matter how many you have, whether you have a few hundred, whether you have a few thousand, the majority of the people on your personal Facebook page most likely are not realtors. Right. They're most likely not even, your friend list most likely does not even consist of hundreds of lenders or hundreds of title reps or escrow officers. Chances are your friends list consists of normal people, average yep. consumers, renters, buyers, homeowners, whatever, average people that work at a local, you know, coffee shop or whatever, Walmart or whatever. And so the majority of your friends do not know the business. Therefore, they do not even know that this is not your business page. So God only knows how many of your friends your genuine ones who actually want to support Brenda, God only knows how many actually clicked on this page, liked this page, thinking they were supporting you mm -hmm. when they're not, right? When I like Palmer House, it has nothing to do with Brenda. Obviously, you work there, but that follower, the person that just liked it, they're not seeing your stuff. They're seeing Palmer House's stuff, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Makes sense? So simple, simple, simple edit. Rather than showing this link, you need to be showing this link. Okay. And so again, with Candy, she's showing me her link. I click on it and it takes me straight to her business page. 
And so that's one, that's one link that needs to be added. And then the rest is right here. As I come across Brenda's page, let me know that you're on Instagram. Let me know that you're on Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn. Show me your website address. Don't let me search for it because as I got, as I come to your page, I got to search for it. I got to click about, mm. I got to kind of search for it. And, and when I click about, you have a few links showing over here, but look at candies. If you notice, if you look closely, which you don't even have to look that close, every single link is identical. So the simplicity in the branding, the simplicity in customizing the link to match gives off a huge impression to your audience. And that's the first impression. I want to land here and, let, and, and, and automatically know that Brenda is a real person because she's on Instagram. She's on LinkedIn. These are the top platforms. So it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. Those are the top five. Okay. Now, you don't have to be posting on all these platforms. That's not what I'm saying. You don't have to post on all of them all the, all the time and be this social media butterfly. No, you don't have to be doing that. But what you, have to, what you have to understand is the fact that we're now in business. We are building a real estate business. We are open for business. We're looking for buyers, sellers. We're looking for investors. We are a brand. And what we need to know as a brand, as a company, as a real estate empire that we're looking to build, we just have to know where our audience is at. And we know social media, we know that's where they're at, but which ones? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. Those top five platforms are literally where billions of people are at. Every past client, every existing client, every future client you'll ever close escrow on is literally on one of those platforms right this very second. And that's a fact. So when I come across Brenda's, just because I connected with her on Facebook and now we're Facebook friends, how does she know that I don't spend 19 hours a day on LinkedIn? Right. And so what, what, would, have, what would have happened is if, if that LinkedIn link was right here, I would have noticed it right away. Automatically, that's my favorite platform. I would have clicked on it. And one second later, I would have been following you on LinkedIn. And because I'm used to messaging people on LinkedIn, I would have messaged you there. And, and, and if that was regarding a listing or if it was regarding an open house, you better be sure you get that message. And, 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 and all that took was simply placing the link. So when you can put one link and one link only, or one name, I should say, one name and just customize every link, it just, look, it just makes your brand look better. It makes your brand look better. It makes you look like a brand. And it, and it allows your audience to know you under one name. You want to brand one name and one name only. So if someone types that in on any of these platforms, they'll find you. Make okay. sense? Yeah, it does. It does. And I don't oh. like, uh, yeah, like right now, I don't, I don't, I'm trying to come up with a name. Yeah. To yeah. Myself. I, you'll find, you'll, you'll think of something you'll think. And, and this right here, you did it for Facebook. So this is, this is exactly what I'm telling you. You did it for Facebook. You customized the username. Right. Yep. I just put my name just for now. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. And then, and then, and then Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Twitter, and then, and then, and then also getting the dot com. Because right now, if I click about, or even on your personal page, look, we have this one, which is the one, which is, which is, which is your broker's link, right? So that one right there, is that going to the website that your broker gave you? Yeah, but it's mine with my information. Yeah, with your information. So yeah. rather than having this brenda.exploreStLouisHomes.com, rather than that long link, let's just do your link. Like whatever your username is, let's get that.com and let's just brand that name. So when people click on it, then they can go to your website. But, but it's one name. So for example, with Candy, I click about, everything is one name all the way down to her.com. Okay. So, so, and then, and so that's the personal page. And then when we go to the business page, like for example, with your, with your, um, um, about on the business page, this is what you're showing me, your email and your dot com. If I go to, if I go to Candy's page and I click about, this is what she's showing me. Everything is hedge properties, hedge properties, hedge properties, hedge properties, hedge properties. And this down here is LinkedIn and Pinterest, but I don't know why the icons are not showing, but there's Instagram, there's Twitter, there's her website address. 
and, yep. and that's just what I call step one. And again, Brenda, this is not really my, my whole, you know, background of marketing and saying, Hey, you should do this. It's not really, it's not really that it's just after looking at thousands and thousands of real estate agent pages, I know that branding and your marketing and your personal branding means everything. And now, now that we're transitioning onto social media and trying to crack the code on what it takes to build a social media brand, I'm telling you, this is as basic as it gets, is listing all those links and making them match. That's okay. step one. That's step one is, is just giving that one link to your audience and, and, and one name only. Okay. So that alone would turn around that personal page. It would completely look way more, way more updated. And then also on the business page, because as you start to run ads, so the whole, the whole thing is I have an open house coming up. I got to run an ad. Okay. But here's the deal. When people start seeing your ad in the newsfeed, there's two places they can click on. So as they see any ad, any ad, it doesn't matter if it's a real estate agent or a chiropractor, it doesn't matter. Here's the news feed. This is where everybody's attention is at, is in the middle. So whether they're looking at it from a cell phone or whether they're looking at it from an open house, I mean, excuse me, for an, I just read that post, whether they're looking at it from a computer or a cell phone, it's the news feed, this middle section. Here is an ad right here. Anytime you see the word sponsored, that yeah. is an ad. So when it comes to you running your ad, I can either click on learn more and go straight to his webpage, or I can click on his name. So again, with over a million realtors, we just got to stand out. And if I come over to his page and I click on about, cause I never heard of Nicholas, who the heck is Nicholas? I'm going to click about and I'm going to see all of his links. Mm -hmm. And this guy, he's just, his links are just looking horrible. And, and, and it's not that people are, 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 are pinching at it. It's not like we're over here, trying to look at that it's just subconsciously as a consumer it's just little random things that we notice it's just little it's it's the little things it's it's paying attention to the details that's all it is it's so when people click about i want them to see all my links and i want them all to match i want them to, to look good you know what i mean and, wow. it, and it's basic it's basic so this guy running facebook ads there's his links but everything is it, it, it just look well this made you look video made you look video made you look video his YouTube should be make, made you look, and then his Twitter, LinkedIn, and Pinterest should have also been looking, may, been listed and made you look. Yeah. You look video. But again, I mean, it's just going up another step. That's all. I mean, it's just taking it up another, another step, and that's just what I, what I call step one. And so you want to do that before you start running ads. Here's step two. Okay, here's step two. And again, as you start to run ads, they're going to either click learn more to go to a web page, or they're going to click on your link to come to your business page, okay? Here's step two, here's step two. And so as, let's go, let's pull back up mine. Um, okay, so here's, here's what every single real estate agent in the entire country is doing. This is step two. Again, as I started request, re requesting thousands of people, here's what started to happen. Every single real estate agent clicks invite to get their friends to like their business page. Mm -hmm. Every single notification, Sandy, Michelle, Deborah, Shannon, Karina, Nicole, if I did not point this out to you, you and I would have became would have became would have become friends on Facebook. So we would, I'd request you, we'd become friends. You would have sent me an invite because that's what you you've been doing. I mean, you got 363. You've been clicking invite inviting people from your personal page to like your business page. That's what every agent does. And when I click on anyone's page, anyone's page, I've seen thousands of them, Brenda, I'm not joking. I've literally seen thousands. When I go to everyone's page, every single agent is around a few hundred likes, 300, 400, maybe 500 the most. And someone that's at 562, they've been clicking invite forever. Here's why that's a waste of time. Number one, is that you're physically doing it. Even though you can come in here and invite your friends one time and, and the notification goes out to everyone on your list, yeah. the fact is that not everyone's going to accept that invite. So you'll find yourself clicking invite all the time. Every time you get a new friend, click invite. Just to try to get that number up a few hundred. Time consuming. Physically take, if, it's, if any of this is physically taking your time, it's a waste of time. It's taking too much time. We gotta automate, every, we gotta, we gotta automate all this. Number one, physical waste of time. But here's worse than number one. Here's number, here's number two. Here's worse than number one. 
as you scale this friend list up and as you go to, to a few thousand friends, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, as you take that number up, it's the same thing for Instagram. It's the same thing for LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter. It is the absolute same thing. The people who are following you on your personal pages, it doesn't matter if it's a business page or a personal page. We have one account. Facebook is the only one where you have a personal page and a, and a quote unquote business page. Facebook is the only one, but everything else, it should just be one account. You don't need a business for Instagram, a personal for Instagram, a business for Twitter. You don't need, you just need, you just need one account for each platform. But here's the reality. As you scale this number up of your friends and you start to request more friends and more people request you, here's what's crazy. 95%, I know it's 99, but I'll be a little bit conservative and I'll just say 95. 95% of your friends will live across the country and not know you. So as you and I become friends on Facebook, I'm in California, you're in Missouri, you're inviting me to like your business page, you're posting a link to your listing, but I'm not moving out there. And so when you look at your friend list, I mean, your, your like count, 99%, I'll give you the 1%, the 1% or maybe your, your in-laws, your, your cousins, your girlfriend, your friends that you went to high school with that are friends on your Facebook page, you invited them, now they like your business page, I'll give you 1%. But 99% of the 363 do not live in the area. They don't even live in the state. So when you post your coming soon, no one cares. Right. Like no one cares. And, and we spent a good amount of time inviting those people to like our page. That's what's crazy. 363, you didn't get there overnight. Like you've been right. spending some time clicking invite just to get a bunch of people that don't even care. This is step two. So I'm just telling you what every agent is doing. Every agent clicking invite when 95% of their friends don't even live in the area. And so rather than doing that, when I come here, this number needs to be a little higher. So this is before we run the open house ad. This is before we run a Facebook ad for a listing. This is before step three. This is step two. Here's what we have to do. This is what I see when I come across Brenda's page, 363. This is what I see when I come to, to, to Candy's page, 3,500. Wow, yeah. You see, you see how crazy that is, Brenda? Look, you saw that number and in one second, you said, wow. Literally, and there was emotion in that. It wasn't just, wow. You actually had emotion in that. Right. You looked at that and you're like, holy crap. Right? You said, wow. That right there is social proof. That's credibility. That is what we call authority. When people land here, and here's the reality, 95% of our friends, as I mentioned, they're going to live across the country, but 95% of our friends don't know us. Like, I don't know Brenda. Like, the same way you're on this call wondering who the heck David is, I'm on the call wondering who the heck Brenda is. Right. And even if we were friends on Facebook, and even if we became friends, and we were friends for nine months, but we're just random Facebook friends, I st we, we don't know each other at all. And, and that's how it is. Like, so, so, so I don't know that Brenda's a top producer. I don't know that she closes the deal every week. I don't know that she's been in real estate for the past 17 years. I don't know any of that. And neither do your Facebook friends. We don't know any of your offline credibility. So when we come here to this business page, now all of a sudden we're seeing an ad for a listing. Now all of a sudden we're seeing an ad for an open house. But who is Brenda? I'm not her Facebook friend. I don't even know who she is. I don't like her business page, but I'm seeing the ad all of a sudden. Let me click on her business page. Let me see who she is. Again, when they come here, that number needs to be a little higher. Okay. So that's step two. So rather than clicking invite, and, and, and to tell you the truth, I did the same thing. I ran the same ad for Brian. So when we come to Brian's page and we go to his actual business page, so look, Brian, here are all of his links. I ah. set all that up for him. So... All of his links, I did that for him. We, take, we go over here to his business page. I ran that ad for him. So now his online credibility, now he's ready to start running Facebook ads. Now he's ready to start step three and start targeting his local area because it's not social media that I want to, impr that I want to impress. Like I don't care about impressing my Facebook friends with that big number. Who I need to impress are the people in my local area.
So when I start running Facebook ads for my listing targeting St. Louis or targeting your, your Ellisville or wherever you're marketing, when I start running that ad on that listing to my local area and I start running Facebook ads to my local area, those are the people that I want to impress. I want them to see my ad, come to my page and automatically think I've been in real estate for 57 years because a few thousand people are following my page. Got it. Okay. Makes yeah, sense. I like that. So, right. so that's step two. And then step three, now we can go into local ads. Now we can go into lead capture. Now we can go into promoting our open house or our listing. That's step three. And so again, every time I jump on a call for the first time, every realtor, and, 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 and let me know if, if you were the same way, you were, all you were thinking was step three. All you were thinking is how in the heck do I market this open house? Yes. Right. Without even knowing these basics, without even thinking that there were, there were these basics. But as I showed you these basics, basics, step one and step two, does that not change anything? Does that not like, so the light, right? A light bulb went on and, and it, it, it actually makes sense. Let's, let's do step one and two and then, and then we can go on to step three. So step three, what do we got for step three? What do you got going on? What is it? Is it an open house? Is it a listing? What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? What do you so um, my listing is going to go live today. I just got the um, professional photographs. So awesome. I'm, I'm putting it into um, the MLS and it'll go live here in a little bit. Awesome. And awesome. then I'm going to have an open house on Sunday. Okay. Now, I, and I'm just, just letting you know this on this open house. This is a 10 day listing. I, um, it's actually a one day listing. So it, this was for sale by owner. Mm -hmm. They're friends of mine. Um, they sell all their houses um, for sale by owner. They don't want to pay the big real estate commission. Mm -hmm. I knew that. So I had proposed a one day listing um, that um, I get the listing. I market it for seven days prior to the open house. Um, and then I have an open house on Sunday and um, hopefully to get a, a buyer. So then Tuesday is my end of the listing. If it's not sold, either the listing comes down or they hire me to continue the listing. Perfect. So, so I'm just putting, I'm just letting you Perfect. know it's all about this open house. <laughs> okay. So here's what I already have put together. Okay. So here's, here's what everyone does. Let me show you. And I don't mean to keep bringing up everyone. I know you don't even care about everyone, but at the same time, we have to look at, we have to analyze our industry. We have to look at what the heck, how's everyone else doing it? And I'm telling you how everyone else is doing it and how, and, and the reason why they're still stuck. Here's what everyone's doing. Everyone will just simply post that listing or market their open house. Like, let me show you what it looks like. Let's go to, let's look at some listings really, really quick. And I'll show you what everyone is doing. Um, which is what you're doing, which is what everyone does. They just post their links on social media. That's what, you know, what, what it is. But, but as we know now, 95% of the people that are seeing it, even when you start posting these groups, now, if you post in local groups, then, then, okay, at least, at least we have a better chance. These people are local, but if it's any other random Facebook group, or if it's just your Facebook business page, or if it's now, or, or if you're posting that on your personal page, you can still do all that. But as I just got done saying, 95% of the people following you don't even live in the area. Right. Now, 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 if we're hoping and we're betting on the handful of people on our personal Facebook page that actually know us, you know, coworkers, ex high school classmates, whatever, if we're holding our breath and banking on that, then don't hold your breath because that's just a handful of people that already know us. And, and okay, they may not even be in the market, but what everyone is doing is they're just, throwing spaghetti against the wall to see what sticks and that's social media. So as I start to scroll down, look, this person, Isabel, I'm seeing this. This is in Sugarland. I'm in San Diego, California. Why am I seeing it? Because she's just posting it because we're friends and, 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 and she just thinks it'll be cool to post it in the group. And, and when everyone in the group lives across the country and I, and I get it, the more exposure, obviously the better I get it, but it's so untargeted. It's not even funny. So, so, so this is what people are doing. They're posting it or, or they'll post, let's go to, or here, here's an open house. Perfect example. Here's, here's where you're at right now. Mm -hmm. The text, the images and what this person is doing. She lives in, 
where does Donna live? She lives in, well, where's this property? She's in Port Orange, wherever that may be, but it's definitely not in my area. So she's posting it for everyone to see. I'm seeing it. I'm in San Diego. I'm nowhere in the market, but I'm seeing it. And right. so what she's holding her bet, what she's betting on is the fact that, okay, someone's going to comment. Someone may message me about it. That's what she's thinking. Right. When I'm saying, no, you have to run this directly to Port Orange. You run that as a Facebook ad directly to Port Orange. And when they see that ad, people in that local area, here's what they're going to do. They are going to click on the ad. They're not going to just comment on the ad. They're going to click on it and they're going to come to this page right here. Let me give an example. This is an example. We can obviously change the image and change all the text and, and make it match your brand. But let's just use this as an example. They see the ad, right? They see your ad. You write out the text, the specs of the property and all that good stuff. You put a few images of the property and then they click on learn more because this is going to be an actual ad. So just like over here, when you right. look at any sponsored ad, there's always that learn more button. So right here, here's a sponsored ad from Grant Cooper. Here's the learn more. Right. So people are either going to click on the image and it's going to take you to their webpage or they're going to click on learn more and they're taken to a web page, or they click on Grant Cooper and go to his business page. So if I click on learn more, let's say this is your property, I click on learn more, here's where you're taking me. Get instant access to the price and photos of this property, homes in this market move extremely fast, a few bullet points of the property, view all 17 photos now. That's how you capture leads. Ah. That's it. We don't take them to your Palmer House website where there's a million things to click on. We don't take them to any other website where there's a million things to click on. I don't care for people to comment on it that don't even live in the area. I need to run this ad directly to that local area, get people to click learn more and give up their information. I need a lead. I don't need a Facebook comment, right? Now, now if people comment, that's fine. They're in the area, they comment, cool, I'll take that. But at the same time, this allows us to just run the ad on autopilot and just get people to, to opt in where Brenda can capture leads. Who knows? Maybe this property ain't the one for them, but they, they're definitely in the market. They live two miles away from you. They're obviously looking, right, for something. So now you have that lead. And, and, and so, so taking them, so a Facebook ad is what I call step three, running local lead capture ads for buyers and sellers with a Facebook ad targeting your local area, that's what I call step three. This landing page, taking them to one single page, this is what I call step four. When you capture that email, that's what I call step five. Because here's the reality behind a consumer. A consumer is gonna see that. Someone in your local area that may be looking for property, they're gonna see it and they're gonna click on the button because they wanna see all the photos because they're interested in moving. But what if that person is not interested in that exact listing, and, but, but they may be open for others? That's why we have them on our email list now. So I captured their name and email. If their name and email is on a list, that's what I call step five. Over the next few days, they're going to get an email from me. Hey, John, this is Brenda. Just wanted to follow up. I know you inquired regarding 777 Plaza Boulevard a couple of days. The property is still on the market. Let me know if you'd like to, if you'd like to schedule a private showing, and, I, and I'd be more than happy to, 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 um, to give you my time. Click the link below. It'll take you straight to my calendar where you can schedule a call now. And that's, email, that's an email that went out a day later. Two days later, another email goes out. Hey, hey, Jason, just wanted to follow up. I know you inquired a few days ago regarding that property. Hey, guess what? The property is already off the market. It did sell. Properties in the market are selling like hotcakes. But hey, if you're still in the market and looking for other properties, I do have a list available. Click the link below. It'll take you straight to my calendar. And I'd love to chat with you to see what you're looking to, looking to get into. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. That's an email that went out three days later while Brenda was sleeping. And that is how you're getting people. That's how you're nurturing these leads that are now all of a sudden coming through your Facebook ad. You're not going to be calling them every day. You're not going to be Facebook messaging them every day. All this stuff is automated. Ooh. And so it's, it's the email automation that I call step five, where we want to nurture that list. We want to get these people on the phone with us because that's the ultimate goal. Your ultimate goal is to get people on the phone. 
Right. Like I need to talk to them. Right. Like, so, so, so it's not going to happen right here. They're not going to give you their phone number right away. You can add a phone number filled and, 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 and try to try to get the number from people right away. But you have to also put yourself in the consumer's shoes. When you see an ad, you click on it. Unless you're super, super fired up and super, super, super ready to pull the trigger, you'll give up a phone number depending on what it is. But nine out of 10 times when you see an ad and you click on it, you're not giving up your, giving up your phone number right away. You'll right. give up name and email right away, but not all the time you're going to give up a phone number. So it's why, that's why the email automation is so important. Whoever comes to this page and opts in regarding that open house or opts in regarding that listing, I need to be able to email them over the next few days. And I'm not going to do it physically myself. Like I'm not going to just sit there and, and manually email in each individual person as they come in. Heck no. I'm going to have an email automation set up where over the next seven days, these people that come through are going to automatically get these seven emails. So yeah, so you'll sit down one, you know, an hour, one time, and you'll write out a handful of emails and then dump them into the autoresponder and let the autoresponder send them out whenever you set, whenever, whatever day you set. They opt in today, they're going to get another email tomorrow. They're going to get another email after that. They're going to get another email after that. And it's either regarding that property, regarding that listing, regarding that open house, or it's offering them other listings that may be on the market. And so it all comes down to just running that Facebook ad and all these leads that are coming in, these are not nationwide leads. These are all people in that local targeted market that you ran a Facebook ad to. Right. Bottom line, that's all it is. It's step one, those links. Step two, your like count. Step three, Facebook ads to your local area. Step four, bringing them to a landing page. And then step five, nurturing that list with your email automation. Those are the five basic steps. Those are the five basic steps. So, it, so if, if, you don't have, if you don't have a landing page like this, you can for sure use mine. Um, and we can get people to this, to, this actual, to this actual page, which is drive traffic to this page, get people to opt in, get people to see that ad and, and just target your local area. Right. Okay. That, that, that's all it comes down to. And and how how big are you on video? Like, do you do video at all? Oh no, I hate it. <laughs> but I want. I need to get better at it. Here's what I would recommend. Here's what I would recommend. And you don't even have to be on camera in this case. Get out okay. to the property and do a simple selfie, or not selfie, but do a simple video where you're just narrating it. You're holding the phone, you're, you're, you're videoing the, the actual property, you're doing some type of walkthrough. If you cannot get in, then maybe do an exterior walkthrough and just talk about the property, talk about, this, talk about the neighborhood, talk about what's close in the area. That can all literally be a two-minute video where Brenda's not even on, on, on camera, she's behind the camera narrating it, and you're just talking about the property. That right there would make an amazing Facebook ad. Okay. The images are one thing, but video is a completely, completely other thing. Like video could be super, super powerful. Selfie style, not, well, selfie is when you're, you know, on camera, but it's still selfie even because you're holding the phone. So you're holding a cell phone, nothing professional. You do not need a camera crew at all. The more unprofessional the video looks, the better. So on your cell phone, I would highly recommend doing that as well. You have images now. Um, I'd recommend getting out to the property if you can and just do a simple, simple walkthrough and get it on video. Okay. And, 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 and are you close to the property? Can you get out there anytime soon? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Simple. What, do you have a decent cell phone? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hold the phone horizontal. So, so widescreen, not vertical, not up and down, hold the phone horizontal and record the video that way. Okay. So widescreen. And, and that right there, I'm telling you, Brenda, that right there is, is how we can get, literally get thousands of people in that local area to see that post, to see that video, to see that ad. Okay. That's what I highly recommend is, is, is video. I just feel like um, the video, like, so I've done this before and I actually think that you did ads for us. I used to be partners with Matthew Mushlin. Oh yes. Matthew, Matthew. I didn't, I didn't run an ad for him, but oh, yeah, I don't think I ran an ad for him, but he did, he did reach out and, and yeah, that guy's, a, yeah, I, I definitely know Matthew. I definitely know okay. Matthew. Yeah. And I thought maybe you, and I, 
thought um, you did an ad for us, but maybe not. No, hey. I don't think don't I, remember. I don't think I did. So I had three. Yet. So I had three listings and um, we went out there and videotaped ourselves doing, um, going through each of the houses. You were, that, Brenda, that's where I remember seeing you. Yes, you yeah. were. There was three properties. He was on one of them. You were, weren't you on one of them or were you holding yeah. the camera? Well, yeah, I was holding the camera on one of them and I yes. did the other two. Yes, yes, yes. I remember that. I remember yeah. that. I remember yeah. that. Yes, for sure. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So now he's with a different broker then now, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's where I recognize you from. Right on. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm like, I, I'm, it's just one of those things is I hate being on camera, but I know in order to be successful in real estate, I need to get over that. And, and, and what's so crazy is that again, I've spoken at thousands, 99% are camera shy. Yeah. And, and, and here's the crazy part. I'll even take it even further and be even more transparent with you. If you literally go look at all my friends, Brenda, if, cause again, it's a public list. If you look at, if you look at my list, in fact, I can just show you right now. If you look at my list, not only is every single one of them a real estate agent, but I think it's 90, I think it, let's just call it four, nine, nine, seven are actual female. So my, my ideal client is a female real estate agent. I don't know why I work with women better than men. I don't, I don't know why it's always been that way. It's kind of weird. I don't know why, but all of my prospects, all of my clients, they're all women. And when I speak about video, yeah, 99% of you guys are camera shy. Yes. But here's what's so crazy is that when you start to do video, we're only doing video for a specific reason. And the specific reason is to run a Facebook ad. It's not to post on our personal page. It's not even to really, it's not even really about posting on our business page. It's to take that ad and run it to our local market. And when you start running videos to your local market, you're running it to people that are not necessarily your Facebook friends. They don't like your business page. And, 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 and chances are a lot of people that are going to be seeing it are people that don't even know you. Mm -hmm. So, so I truly believe that one reason why we do for the camera is for our own personal insecurities of what we think people will think of us. And who are those people that would think something of us? Our in-laws, our cousin, our aunt, our girlfriends, people who are actually on our personal Facebook page that we actually know that we actually care, like, and, and, and respect people that we actually know our neighbor, they're on my Facebook page, Right. We, a lot of times we care about what these people in our circle of influence think when they start seeing us on video. But the crazy part is, is that the videos that I'm referring to are specifically for Facebook ads and won't even be seen by people like that. It's going to be running to a completely cold market that of people because I exclude your business page. All your personal friends they like that you actually know, they like your business page. Right. When I run the Facebook ad, I exclude people who like your business page. So now we have a video of Brenda going out to her local market being seen by people that don't even know her. So however you think you look on camera, however you, I'm telling you have a great look, you have the knowledge, whatever the heck you may think your insecurity is, I'm telling you right now, get over it. Like no one is going to even know you. No one's going to prejudge you. No one's going to say, Oh, there's Brenda. I used to go to school with her. Like no one, it's not even going to be like that at all. Like I want you to, I want you to really get comfortable with it. Cause that's where that, if, if you could start getting comfortable with video, we would literally, literally take over your backyard. Like what Matthew was doing back then, if we were running that every week, so the strategy, the reason why I call step three, step three, is because it's not just a random Facebook ad and let's just do it and, and, and see what happens. Step three, when we start running Facebook ads, what you want to start doing is running one every week. And when you can start running video of yourself every week, talking about buying and selling real estate, mm -hmm. that personal branding People start to see it. People start to like you. People start to think that they know you. People start to trust you because now you're educating them on the process of buying and selling real estate. It's a mini commercial. That's what a video is. It's literally a mini commercial that you're able to run to your backyard for pennies. And, and there's nothing as powerful than that. You're gonna, we're going to run some ads of your image. If that was an ad 
of Brenda talking about the property, it would mm-hmm. perform a thousand times better. And it has nothing to do with how you look. It has everything to do with the fact that that's actually Brenda. It's a real person. Right. And that's what we gravitate to. People gravitate to people. We buy from people. We don't buy from brands. We don't buy, buy from some random image. We, we buy from people. And so that's why you're so good in real estate. People buy you. They don't just buy your house. They buy you. Brenda is, is amazing. They buy Brenda, right? right. Like you have, to, you have to know your stuff, which you do. And that's what you sell. You sell your knowledge. You sell your expertise. You're selling your service. It's Brenda. And so when I could start seeing you on video, I'm just telling you, and, and, and I know I probably talk way more than I need to about this, but it's really that important. Like if you start putting out videos and we start doing one every week, that whole town's going to know who you are. And that's a good thing. And, and that, that, that's only going to happen through video. You can run images for sure, but to take it up a, a few notches, video. That's where I want you to, to be thinking in, in 2020 is okay. video. So, so, so I know that was a ton of information right there. What we should start at real quick is step one, step two, and then, and then run this listing. Okay. So it just comes down to what's our budget. Like, what do we have to put towards Facebook ads? Like the Facebook like ad is one thing. And then, and then, and then the listing, the open house, that's a whole nother ad as well. So right. two ads, like what can we put towards, towards the two ads? Like, do we have a, do we have a, I don't know. What's our budget? Um, I'm yeah. I don't, hell, I haven't even thought about it. I did do a Facebook ad about a week ago, mm-hmm. um, and I spent I think thirty dollars. Um, I mean, uh, and I can go, you know, above that. Um, but that was just. Um, so, what is an average of an ad run? How much do people spend? Well, it comes down to how it comes down to how long you want to run it. First of all, it comes down to how long you want to run it. Any type of listing ad or an open house ad, you want to run it at at least at least twenty dollars a day. Okay. So if you're running it for ten days, put two hundred towards that ad and run it for ten days. Like that that is kind of where you want to be as far as lead capture. Okay. So if we're trying to capture leads, that's kind of where you want to be. Now there, there's different types of ads. There's one type of ad where where it's a lead ad. They see the listing, they click on it, and they come over here and we capture the lead. That's one type of ad. Another type of ad is where they see the listing and they simply comment below. That's another type of ad. And then, and then, a, and then a, a third type of ad is if it's a video, they just watch the video. Mm-hmm. So there's different objectives. Do we want to pay Facebook 20 bucks? Here's face, here, Facebook, here's 20 bucks. Get people to view the video. That's what you're going to do is get people to view the video or here's 20 bucks. Facebook, get people to comment below. And all these people that are commenting are not people who like my page. They're not people who are Facebook friends with me. These are people that live in the local area because I'm running it directly to that area. And these are people commenting on my ad. That's another type of ad, the comments. And then again, the third one is, is actually clicking, learn more, coming to a page and giving up their information. Okay. So, so, it just comes down to, to what's our objective. Do we really want to capture the lead or do we want people just to comment below? You know, so right. what I do is I, I run multiple ads for it. So I don't just run one ad. I'll end up running multiple, depending if the budget is there. If the budget is there and we have a, you know, a few hundred to play with, let's say, for example, then, then we can run multiple ads. One, to get people to comment. One, to get people to view it if it was a video. Another ad will be running simultaneously to get people to click, learn more and come to the page. So depending on the budget, multiple ads would be ran for this one property to either get a ton of people knowing that open houses is coming up or get a ton of people opting in to give up their information. Okay. So it just, it just depends on the, on, 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 on the budget. And then that's step three. And then just taking the light count up a little higher that's what you want to do as well. And so with the likes, and that's why the budget, it just, it just depends. It depends on, on, on what you're, you know, what you want to put out for all this, but for the likes, for example, what Brian did is he put 300 towards the likes alone. And that's how I took him up to 3,500. He had like 300 likes. 
Right. And so he put 300 towards the like ad alone and we took it up to 3,500. And that was a one-time ad. That's not an ad we run every month or every week. That's a one-time ad. Take the like count up a few thousand, shut it off, and then go on a step three. But you don't have to go up to 3,500 if you don't want. Like I'm telling you right now, most agents are on a few or are, are around a few hundred. If you okay. just took yours to a couple thousand, I mean, if you just took this from 363 to 1300, the page right. is completely different. Right. Now, who are those 1300? Are they in the area or are they just all over? Very, very good question. They're all over. The like ad is the only one that you have to run to everyone on Facebook who fits the interest. So fits the interest of home ownership or fits the interest of real estate, but you exclude realtors. But the likes, those are going to come in from everywhere. And the likes are not even where leads are at. Like right now, you're 363. Leads are not going to ever come from there. Ever, ever, no. ever. Because first of all, when you do post, as I mentioned, not only do mo majority of them not know you and the majority of them live across the country, not only is that true, but also when you post organically, the reason why not that many people like it is because Facebook only shows it to about 1% of your total like count. Right. So, so if you keep clicking invite, you're not going to get people in your local area to like the page anyways, and leads are not going to ever come from there anyways. The only reason why we want to bump that number up is for the perception and the social proof and for the credibility. So when I do start running ads to, to my local area of St. Louis, for example, that number is big. Okay. So it's just, it's, just to, it's just to bring the page social proof. And that's why on my page, I had to do the same thing on my page, like over here, when you come to my personal page, there's step one. Um, all my links are listed right here. So all everything is matching. There's step one. And then you come over to, to my business page. Here's step two. Because Brenda does not know David, I knew that I had to do something to make it stand out. So on my page, I took my likes to 10,000. Now, you don't need nowhere near that. You don't even need half that. Right. But at the same time, no one knows David. So when you come to my business page and you look at that number, it's safe to assume that I know a little bit about something, right? All because right. of a stupid number. Right. Right. And that number, yes, although my leads, when I post, although Facebook's only shown it to about 1%, that's fine. But that's step two. I wanted to get that big number. So when I go on to step three and I actually start running ads to realtors, because that's who my market is, I, I run ads to real estate agents in the country. And as I run ads to them and they come to my page because they're not my Facebook friend, they don't even know I have a business page, but they're seeing my Facebook ad. Who the heck is this guy, David? They come to my page and they see that number. That's where I win. I win on that first impression. I win on the perception of that big number. So you don't need to take yours that high. I mean, you, there just needs to be a comma in that number. So right. even if you just took it to 1,300, you added 1,000 likes to it, that would be a big deal. That's going to help you win on the back end. And the back end is our local Facebook ads. Right. I need those people in my area to see a big number. The hell with everyone else. Right. Right? Okay. So, so and, 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 and also, you can continue to post organically. But as I'm telling you right now, 363, no one lives in the area. Facebook is only showing it to 1%. So posting organically is not even going to do it for you. We have to run Facebook ads if we're right. capturing leads. That's it. I mean, and that, that's all step, step three. So okay. in this case, I would just start with step one, you know, start with step one. Let's get all the links listed. Okay. I can easily, easily do that for you all. I, yeah. I could take this name and just create every link around that name. Um, I can even get the dot com. Like, let's have you have you checked to see if the dot com was available? Um, I think that it is. Yeah. So normally it's about eleven ninety nine or twelve bucks to purchase any any domain, but I have a coupon code where we can get it for a buck. So if it is available, we'll 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 definitely get it. I'll get it for you, and I'll I'll make sure. Yeah, it's available. So, um. Yeah. So a dollar. Yeah. So there's, there's the dollar, a dollar. And then, and then 1199 actually for the first year. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, so it's 11, I think it's 1199 for the first year, but I can get it for a dollar for the first year. So it, it's available if we want to go with that name. 
Right, right. I can register it under your name and you have full ownership and all but that. What do you but, think about having your name, like my name as my page, like Brenda Suter Realtor? I feel like it's so bland. It's not that it's bland. I mean, it is what it is. It's you. I mean, it's your name. It says what you are. Um, you can, you can definitely try to try to make it look even more prettier. I mean, you can, you can tweak yeah. it a little bit like Suter Real Estate or, or Suter Estates or Suter Realty. Right. Yeah, you know, I know. You can, right. You, I do want to. So uh, I know that's the thing is like, I'm so indecisive, but I don't know that I want to keep it at Brenda Suter Realtor. Well, the good thing about digital is that we can always change it. We okay. can always change it. Right. Always change it. It only, it only becomes an issue if you go on and start printing that on different things. So for example, this image, sure. this was a custom image. If you put your social media icons on here, then like, for example, like on mine, like, look over here on my per on my business page, if you come to my business page and you look at the cover photo, I actually had it all printed on my cover photo. So inspired digital, yeah. the Facebook icon, the LinkedIn icon, the Pinterest, the Twitter, the Instagram icon. If all of a sudden I'm like, damn, I don't even want that name anymore. But, right. it, was, but it was printed on everything. And, if you, and for sure, if you put it on your business cards, then obviously, you know, we're, we're screwed. But if we don't print it or put it on any design or anything, we can always change that name. Okay. Okay. You know, so, so we might, we might be, you know, filling, filling that one name now, but in a week you may think of something different and, and we can easily change it. Okay. I just, was, yeah, I was just curious. Cause yeah, I will want to change it. I just haven't figured it out yet. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So I can easily do that step. That part is just time consuming for you. You can easily do it. It's just logging into every account, listing it. It's just time consuming. So I, I love, I don't know why I, I find joy in doing that part. Yeah. But, only because it, it, there's a transformation in the page. I think that's why, I think that's where my kit right. comes from, is that I look right. at Right, and I don't even know how to do it, right. Yeah, I can easily do that part for you. So that's step one. And then the like count, like what's our budget for the likes? Can we put anything towards the like ad and get that up a little higher? So how much would it cost to get a thousand more likes? For every, for every $99, that number will go up a thousand. Okay. So can we just do a um, hundred dollars right now for that particular, for the light count? Yeah, for sure. That's all you'll, I don't think you'll need more than that. That's all, that's all we'll need for that. Okay. So take it up to 1300 and then, and then call it a day. And then after that, every dollar after that goes into step three and that's running local Facebook ads for, okay. for lead capture. So yeah, that's a, that's a good enough budget for the likes. Okay. And, and then let's, let me write this down so I don't forget. And then, what should we do for the actual listing? Okay, so I so I have until Sunday. So really, um, so we got to pour it on, right? So you said if you don't sell it by Sunday, then then you're not on the on on the deal it, anymore. Or if you how 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 did you guys structure it, it again? So it's just a structured as a one day listing. Um, so um, um. I have the opportunity to hold open the open house for them and try to find them a buyer. Gotcha. Gotcha. After that, nothing is guaranteed either. We're hoping to sell it during the open house. Mm -hmm. um, but if we don't, then, then we will be talking from, you know, going from there to see if they want me to continue to list it. Okay. So I, I have, I mean, my thing is, is that I want to wow them and show them how hard I'm working and Dang, not, and, and you're even willing to put money into it. Right. Right. And I may not get anything out of it. Right. And so you may not even get the damn listing. Right. Right. Dang or the buy or the buyer. So yeah, I or, might or come buyer, out of yeah. here with money that I've already, that I spent. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm like, I don't want to put in a ton of money into this. Yeah. But, um, I, I would love to get this listing in this open house to um local st louis people not just st mm -hmm. charles because like i have two uh two p potential buyers looking in newtown which is my neighborhood mm -hmm. from south county mm -hmm. which is a half hour away so it's not just people that are in this yeah. little town it's you know i want to go um a radius of of this area well, and what would you call the radius with, with an ad, you can, you can target a radius around any physical address 
up to 50 miles or even a city. If I typed in St. Louis, it'll allow me to target 50 mile radius. So what's the miles? Like, what do you think around that physical address? How many okay, miles? So, okay. Let me, um, just center. Um, oh shoot. I was, uh, let me just see Oakville. See how far that is. So like 25 miles. Perfect. Perfect. So yeah. So, so that listing goes live today. You'll have everything today. Here's what you should do. Here's what I want, want you to do. Post it on the okay. business page. So right when you get it, post it on the business page, write out whatever you want to write out, you know, three bedroom, four bedroom, write, write out the basic text and post it here first. Okay. Okay. And then here's what I would, I would highly, highly, highly recommend you do as soon as you can get out to the property and do that video. Okay. How far are and you from so the property? How, I mean, I'm right down the street from it. Oh, perfect. Perfect. So, yeah. So, um, I mean, it is occupied. I'd have to make a, an appointment. Um, how, how many, like how long should the video be? Cause I feel like the videos that I do, I can't, um, get them any shorter than like two, three minutes. No, that's perfect. If you just did a couple minutes, it's perfect. But here's, here's, here, here's, here's how I want to answer that. Don't even think about the time. Forget about the time. Forget about how long it's going to take or how long it's not going to take. Here's what I want you to hit on. And, 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 you may not even need an appointment because we don't need, we're not going to do an interior walkthrough. We'll do, a, we'll do an exterior. Just okay. go out to the park, just go out to the, just go out to the property, park down the street and walk in front of it and just record it. Like, okay. here, so here's what you should talk about. You should talk about, yeah, talk about the fact that you can't get in, inside because there's obviously people that live there. Bring that up. It doesn't even matter. Who cares? Talk about it and just say, hey guys, I just want to, this is Brenda. I just wanted to give you a, a, an exterior walkthrough of this property that is now on the market and we have an open house coming up this week. So here are a few things to just touch on. Touch on the, the property, obviously. Talk about the beds. Talk about the bath. Talk about, you know, if it was remodeled. Obviously, give the specs of the property. That's one thing to talk about. Talk about the neighborhood. Talk about what neighborhood it's in and show us. Park, literally park maybe next door. Mm -hmm. Walk out of your car and start recording. And, 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 and record as you're walking up to the property. Okay. Right? So that's going to kill a few seconds right there just by walking, right? Right. And talk about the neighborhood. So number one, you're talking about the property. Number two, you're talking about the neighborhood. Number three, you're talking about what's near it. Schools, freeways, parks, the mall, whatever. You're talking about what's around it. And then, and then number four, you're talking about what it takes to get into it. You know, what, what they're looking for, you know, what the owner is looking for. That, and, and now you're talking about real specs, the price and, and things of that nature. So if you were to really hit on those four things, that would probably be about a three, four minute video, which is perfect. Okay. I always um, thought it was supposed to be a lot less, like under a minute. No, it had, no, it has under a minute if you're running it on Instagram, but if you're running a video on, on Facebook, like even your, like you can look, look for sure. Like look at any random video ad, come to your new news feed. Let's see how long anyone's running a video for like this guy, Dan Henry, his video is three minutes and 22 seconds. Okay. This other video, let's see if I can find another random ad. Um, yeah, video, the, the time has, has really nothing to, nothing to do with it. Um, here's another ad. Here's Matt's marketing blueprint. His video is a minute, 30 seconds. So everyone's a little different. It, it, you don't want it to be less than a minute for sure. Like talk about it, talk about it. Here's another video. This video is super short, but look, it's just images. There's no personality to it at all. And that's why your video, the reason why the, the one on the phone, look, you would think that this, this video ad is great because it looks somewhat professional. It's professional edited. It has words, hundred percent financing. You would think that this one would do okay when it, when it's actually the opposite. The fact that you're going to have one where the camera is, is, is wobbly because you're walking, right? Because mm -hmm. it, it's going to look very authentic and unprofessional that's why people gravitate to it 
It's not, these, it. it's not these professional edited commercial looking ones. It's the real ones that Brenda did on her cell phone. That's what we're watching online. I'm watching cat videos on YouTube and the person holding their phone is wobbly and trying to chase the cat around the house. That's what we end up watching, right? So it's the same thing with your business. You want to just keep it as real and as authentic as possible on your cell phone while the camera is shaking. Right. Nothing professional about it at all. That's what people relate to. Right. You know? So, right. so, so this one's a short one. And then, and then, yeah, there's, I mean, so many people have, have different lengths, but if you can crunch all that into a few minutes, it, it'd be perfect. Okay. It'd be perfect. But I just think we should run, run, run both, run an image ad and run a video ad and get them to this page right here to capture the lead. Okay. And that's it. So I can, I can have, especially if it's just for this one property. I mean, I can for sure just use my page. I can, and I can edit this part out and put in your specs of the property. And then, and then also take this image out in the background and put the image of the property. Okay. Right. So now, now, now it's congruent with our actual ad. They click on it. They see it, the image of the property. They click on the, the page. They see the same property, you know, so, so that right there could be super, super powerful. Um, it just comes down to, you know, our budget. So if you, if what's today, today's what's today, Wednesday, Wednesday. Okay. So if we go live, let's say, let's say you go out. Do you, I don't know. Do you think you can get a video done today? I will try. <laughs> Let, <laughs> let's, try yeah. let's, let's call it tomorrow. Then let's call it tomorrow. If we got up the image ad today and then we get out the video ad tomorrow and we let it run for the next few days through Sunday, you'd have a ton of people knowing about that property, a ton, a ton, a ton, like thousands, literally thousands. Okay. Thousands of people, a few thousand people will end up seeing the video alone. And when you look at video, the powerful thing about video is that it shows the views. So when you look at any video, it, it shows how many people actually viewed it. And so like this guy right here, if I click on this ad, let's click on this Actually, it shows it. Actually, this is. Let's see if I can. Building your email list fast is not the ultimate goal. It's knowing what to do with it once you've filled your autoresponder. Let because me. Being a one hit wonder is. Okay, so he's running a different type of ad. What this guy is running, he's running an engagement ad. An engagement ad is when you just get a, a ton of people to like it. You get a ton of people to comment and you get a ton of people to share it. Whenever you see big numbers like this, it's yeah. an engagement ad. His whole goal wasn't to get you to his website. His whole goal wasn't even to get you to really watch the video. His goal was to get you to comment. And that's what he paid Facebook to do. This is a Facebook engagement ad. Okay. So we can run one like this that gets everyone to comment. Or we can run one to get everyone to view it. Or we can run one to get people to click learn more and give up their information. So what I want to do is I want to run a video ad to get thousands of people to view it. And I want to run an ad to this page to capture the lead. Okay. That's what, that's what I, would, I would suggest doing. Or even if we don't even, let's say we don't even want to capture the lead and we want people just to comment. I mean, that could, be, that could be powerful as well. We run a video ad, get thousands of people to view it. We run an engagement ad to get people to comment. And all those people that are commenting are people who live in our backyard that are interested in the property. That's what I would like, yes. Let's do that. We'll do it in engagement ad. We'll get a ton of people to comment and we'll get a ton of people to view the video. Okay. That, that could be super powerful. So... It just, it just comes down to our daily budget, I guess. I mean, if we're going to run it for, yeah. let, let's say we start the image ad today, Wednesday, and we run it Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So those right. will be four days. If you put, let's just call it, let's just call it $20 a day. There's an $80 budget on those four days. Right. Yes. And so it's a little bit over what I wanted to spend, but, um, um, I'm just trying to think of, um, but I, I need to do it. <laughs> well, here's the deal. Even at that budget, even at that budget, what you're, you're really benefiting because you're getting step one done for you and you're getting that like, like ad right. for you. 
Right, right. So, and that's what I'm thinking. Like, it's not just about this house. It's about the, you know, right. It's getting uh, more exposure for the future. Yeah, it's it's actually, yeah, it's it's benefiting you even even more because of this branding. So. Okay. So how do I, so what do I do? Do I give you my debit card, you know, my credit card, what? Yeah, whatever card you want me to run it on. And then I'll, I'll post it and I'll actually email you a confirmation, like a receipt as well. And then what I'm going to do also is send you an email and that email will be titled info needed. Okay. Now be for step one. So I can list all the links. I want to get all the links done today. So, so all those links are matching before the ad even goes live. And then I want to get the like ad ran today. So those likes start increasing by tomorrow morning. Um, well, that will be at 1300 in the next couple of days. Like it's not a long-term ad like that. Like ad we'll get thousands. Well, we'll get a thousand within the next couple of days. So info needed will be for, for step one and step two. So I'll email you that. And then you can just reply to info needed. Um, and then, yeah. And then the second email will just be a receipt for the ad. Okay. So yeah. So whatever card you want to post it on is fine with me. Okay. So are you ready? Uh, yeah. Okay. It's a MasterCard. Actually, let me um, pull up. Let me give me one second. Okay. You said MasterCard. Okay, great. Go. 